Hello, IB Environmental Students. Today we're going to quickly talk about UNESCO Man in the Biosphere Program, often called just UNESCO MAB. What is this program? Well, it was an initiative in 1970 that was trying to increase the number of international reserves. And this is going to relate to something else related to reserves that we're going to be talking about, which is single large is usually better than several small. That stands for S-L-O-S-S, SLOSS, debate, right? But should be called a single large over several small reserves, which is best with reserves that are connected, close, and clumpy. So as we think about the fact that internationally we're trying to have more reserves through this program, how we build the reserves is also important. What's their shape, how many of them, etc. So these are the two things we're going to be investigating, and you may be designing a reserve in class if we have time. So here are some visuals that you might want to jot down in your notes. Why are some of these better or worse? So some questions to consider when we're looking at a reserve are, uh, what shape should the reserve be? Is it one large reserve or many, several small ones? All right. Should there be corridors connected like that? And that would be much better. The reason why corridors are better is because they allow for animals to move between the different areas. Think about a coyote or a jaguar being able to move across. They are big territorial animals. They would much prefer a big, big reserve, but if they have to be small, we want these corridors that would allow for them to not get hit by cars or be in between different cities. This is much better. Um, what is the importance of buffer zones around a reserve? So what do I mean by buffer zones? I would draw this picture if you could. Let's say this is our core area of our reserve, the darker green. All right, there is this lighter green that's considered a buffer zone. There is likely to be some organisms in that area, but because that area is the closest to the human settlement, we need to have a big enough reserve that we consider certain areas kind of transitional or buffer because there's so much likely human impact, human contact. This could be from air pollution, noise pollution, light pollution. All those things affect creatures. So a buffer zone is really important and it needs to be big. So the bigger the reserve, the better. And that's going to relate back to some of our other pictures. So we would much prefer something that has a small surface area that's just one large circle over several small that are all separated. So that's why this one is better than this one. This one just has such a thin volume, and very little buffer zone. So again, buffer zone, very, very important. This very much relates to this overall debate we keep talking about. Is it better to have a species-based approach to conservation or a habitat-based approach to conservation? And here are some of the things when we think about a species-based approach. We're really thinking about just focusing on a couple different endangered species. Let's say, for instance, the elephant. We protect their critical habitat. That might be a very small area. We would put some legal jargon to protect them that could be like the red list the IUCN red list or that could be CITES both through the UN international we would try to manage the habitat but really that's not our focus we try to propagate the endangered species in zoos or if it's a plant maybe in a reserve um, or a botanical garden and eventually we try to reintroduce the species back but they don't always do well it is usually much better if we are preserving a bigger giant area that could encompass more complexity and more organisms. This is because usually this is tough. We don't do this as often because purchasing the initial area or land is very expensive and sometimes takes governmental action or is impossible if it's private land. Um, the nice thing is if we kind of rope it off and make it a reserve, it could be potentially less likely to have alien species introduced. That means invasives, not from outer space. Um, and this is hard to do, especially if I have a lot of tourism in my area. People can track things in on their boots. 
we would try to manage the protective area in the reserve and we would try to restore the ecosystem. Um, in the long run, this is a much better approach. It encompasses more, um, but it can be really difficult to initially establish, which is why this is a more frequently seen approach. But our reserves that we're talking about, the Man in the Biosphere Program, or MAB, UNESCO, is really this habitat-based approach. All right, guys, you did a great job. See you in class.